we are going to the third topic of today. Now, uh, going to the third topic of today, which is primary amenorrhea. The moderators for the session are Dr. Pushpa Kohli Ma'am and Dr. Deepa Ma'am. Dr. Uh, I feel immense pride in uh, introducing Dr. Pushpa Kohli Ma'am. Madam is uh, currently the professor and unit chief of uh, the department in the department of obstetrics and gynecology, uh, AVMCH, and Madam is. Uh, uh, Madam holds a PhD in traditional medicine and Madam is a convener of Institutional Innovative Cell, IIC, and uh, president in Women Empowerment. Sorry, Madam is a sorry to disturb you. Put your slide on. Uh, Ma'am, now one. Ma'am, uh, we have just put one. Madam is a resource person for various programs and Madam has conducted and organized uh, numerous CME workshops and conferences. Madam is a president of IMA and Foxy Belgaum branch and the president of Rotary Club of Belgaum Midtown and assistant governor of Rotary. Welcome, ma'am. I would also thank you. feel privileged in, thank you, ma'am. I feel privileged in welcoming our uh, DMS and professor, Dr. S. Deepa, ma'am. Madam uh, Alma Mather is from SC SCB Medical College, Katak, and Madam is a fellowship, uh, holds a fellowship in minimal access surgery and trained in hysteroscopy and infertility. Madam uh, has many research projects to her credit, 24 and 400 projects and uh, numerous paper publications and uh, um, two chapters in books. Welcome, ma'am. The presenters for this uh, topic are Dr. Preeti and Dr. Aina. Both of you, please introduce yourself to the prefest and you can share your screen. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Raina from Mahatma Gandhi Medical College, final year postgraduate of obstetrics and gynecology. The presenting alone or the um, Ma'am, I'm presenting with Dr. Preeti from uh, Manikilavananga College, ma'am. She'll be the primary presenter. Dr. Divya, Dr. Preeti is here. Yeah. Dr. Preeti, your voice is not here. I think you have to put up your headphones. You put, up, put your headphones and uh, even, uh, I don't think she has put her uh, video on. Video is on, ma'am. Preeti, put your uh, presentation on slides so that is better. Yeah, the screen is good. You can go ahead. Preeti, your voice is not here. Have you muted yourself? No, ma'am. Yes. She is not muted, ma'am. Uh, I think she has. Uh, you check your uh, speaker in your laptop, no? Check the speaker in your laptop.
Ma'am, uh, can can we make Dr. Raina present? The case. And if she is also familiar, she can present. But anyway, meantime, by by the time Preeti uh, can get her uh, audio adjustments done, uh, Dr. Raina can present. Okay, ma'am. I'll continue with the case, ma'am. Uh, Mrs. M, 21 years old, from uh, uh, Kadilor, Hindu by religion, belonging to socioeconomic class 4, studied up to 12th standard, homemaker by occupation, married since two months of, uh, married since two months, came with, presented with complaints of difficulty in having coitus and pain during coitus since last two months, and also gives a history of absence of attainment of menstruation, ma'am. Ma'am, actually, the slides are shared by Dr. Preeti. I'm un I can't uh, go Dr. to the next slide, ma'am. Dr. Preeti? Can you change the slides for her otherwise? Your voice is not heard, Dr. Preeti. Ma'am, I'm doing ma'am. You are done. I, I, this is Dr. Preeti. I am hearing. No, ma'am. Uh, it's me, Divya, ma'am. I am sharing the screen from the host. Oh, you are sharing the screening screen yes. for Dr. Preeti. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We have got okay. the PPT, ma'am, so that we can share okay, and get them present. Uh, Dr. Yeah. Aina, you can continue presentation because uh, the, our host is uh, sharing the screen for you. Okay. Okay, okay ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, patient came with the complaints of difficulty in having coitus and pain during coitus since the beginning of the sexual function, which is last two months, and gives a history of absence of onset of menstruation. There was history of onset of pubic hair and breast development from around 12 to 13 years of age. There was no complaints of excess or foul smelling discharge per vagina, itching. There was no history of burning micturation, difficulty in micturation or increased frequency of micturation. There was no history of cyclical abdominal pain, heaviness, mass per abdomen. There was no complaints of headache, visual disturbance, vomiting. There was no history of secretion from the breast. And next slide, please. There was no complaints of significant weight loss, vigorous exercise, stress, stress eating, uh, disorder or eating disorders. There was no history of increased facial hair, acne, hoarseness of voice, hyperpigmentation of skin or uh, flexors. There was no complaints of hot flushes, di uh, mood disturbances, decreased libido or vaginal dryness. There was no history of swelling in the inguinal region, no history of weight gain, constipation and heat intolerance. There was no history of evening rise of temperature, chronic cough, no history of drug intake, chemotherapy or radiotherapy, and no history of repeated blood transfusion. There was no history of skull injury, skull surgery, no history of malnutrition, starvation, chronic renal failure, and no history suggestive of chronic chest wall irritation. Oh, uh, Aina. Yes, ma'am. Tell me there are so many no, no, no negative history. Yes, ma'am. You start from the first negative thing, and why did you ask him? That history you just defined. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I would like to come to my first slide. Uh, this patient is married since two months. So, uh, ma'am, next slide, ma'am. Uh, this patient is married since two months, and since then she's been uh, she's uh, started a sexual function with which she faced difficulty. So, to rule out any infection. I have put the negative history of excess of foul smelling vaginal discharge or itching to rule out any PID or any infectious causes for her difficulty in coitus. Then she also gave us history she of a gave history of absence of uh, onset of menstruation. First, yes, ma'am. Right? Yes, ma With uh, knowing that history only, she has got married or what? Have we been yes, evaluated anywhere regarding this absence of onset of menstruation? No, ma'am. She was un. Ma'am, am I audible now? Your yeah, voice is echoing. Echoing. Yeah. Uh, One second. One second. Because you have the laptop in the same room from where you are speaking. With the fair. Please mute yourself. Doctor. There may be two devices in the same yeah, room. Yeah, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Now, am I audible now? No. 
but it is echoing, echoing is there you have to leave from that laptop device then you should join yes. through the phone device then it will be better ma'am now ma'am ah, yeah ah uh, uh, actually she came with the complaints of only with difficulty in coitus ma'am well, previously she was not uh, uh, been investigated ma'am because she did not have any knowledge about uh, uh, this uh, absence of menstruation ma'am because she is from low um, low middle class that is why she has been she is uh, now presented with complaints of only with difficulty in coitus ma'am what After is her marriage. age what is her age 20 21 years ma'am when you are when are we supposed to evaluate a patient who is having absence of onset of menstruation dr preeti ma'am with uh, uh, with 13 years of age with any ab uh, absence of secondary sexual characters we have to start evaluating ma'am and with 15 years of age uh, with uh, pr any presence of say, secondary sexual characters we have to evaluate in for primary amenorrhea ma'am okay so patients with absence of onset of menstruation having uh, difficulty in coitus uh, when madam asked to what are the reason for the no history no history of false smelling discharge per vagina in her written i don't think it it fits over here okay what is okay. so what do you think first what will be your first uh, reaction to this it's not like we have to write the negative history of all the amenorrhea and all the for all the thing it has to be written it's not like that because it is always a step wise you go ahead it's not like that i want to note everything like that when you go for evaluation of anything she has difficulty in coitus she has pain during coitus and she has absence of uh, onset of menstruation so put all three together and then you should tell okay ma'am so uh, no question of asking about excess or foul smelling discharge per vagina isn't it yes ma'am so yes, what you will suspect first uh suspect in case of here with our history we can suspect any um uh, age and mullerian age genesis ma'am or okay for the only good you have asked the history of onset of pubic hair and breast development what is the use doctor aina for asking um, uh this denotes that uh, secondary sexual characters were present so ovarian causes automatically get ruled out ma'am because the estrogen production in the body is normal okay very good dr preeti you have given history or no history of cyclical abdominal pain heaviness or mass felt what is the cause yes. for that any cryptomenorrhea or imperfected hymen or transverse vaginal septum would cause the symptoms of cyclic abdominal pain or imperfected mass felt for abdomen So to rule him out, any uh, infected hymen or transverse vaginal cavity. Yeah, it's good for your differential diagnosis of uh, cryptomenorrhea you have given. But at twenty-two uh, years of age, uh, this will be less likely. Okay. So if you if a patient, what is the most uh, common presentation they come to us to a casualty? These patients present cryptomenorrhea patients. But why are they coming to casualty? With what complaint they come to casualty? And what they do? Retention of urine. retention yes. of urine yeah very good abdominal pain with retention they present with the acute retention of urine and yeah. what will be the age of patient not more than 20 right uh, 16 18 years of age so suppose they have attained men menarche at uh, some 14 years 15 years like that so for every month if the blood is collecting inside the uterus and the vagina it will not take four or five years to manifest right so that is why i was telling like that but you have you wanted to just explore okay so next thing uh, suppose suppose you get a mask for abdomen in this patient and absence of menstruation other than cryptomenorrhea what else you can could be a diagnosis or something like because uh, unattended testis also can be found in the abdomen or in the urinary region but that can be felt as a mask uh, Ma'am, hematomet. Where the mass will be felt in these cases? It will not be felt in the abdomen. Where it will be felt? It is the lower abdomen. Inguinal region. Inguinal region. Inguinal region. Not abdomen. Not in the abdomen. Okay. One thing you should put age and their complaints together. You should not talk generally. Okay. When you are presenting case. You keep in mind that this is of this age patient. 
So in this okay. age, what negative history I can mention? So there is no need of mentioning the this cryptomenary history, you know. Go go. No Next complaint. to no complaints. Suppose the, the, it is diagnosed with the cryptomenorrhea, how do you manage Dr. Preeti? Uh, cryptomenorrhea, a yeah, uh, small impression uh, is made over the hymen. Uh, what you will do? Directly you will uh, take it no, second first, or you will uh, do anything first, else? First, ultrasound should be done. Uh, for, for what? Ultrasound. Uh, what? Uh, how do you diagnose clinically? Uh, clinically, uh, by doing a vulcan maneuver, uh, the Bulging would be seen in perforated hymen, whereas it will not be seen in the transvaginal septum. That is the difference between perforated Male, male idea. For this you, you will do for no, the examination, local examination. Okay. You will do and you will see bulging hymen. What is the embryology of hymen, Dr. Preeti? Embryology of hymen. Uh, it is the imagination of the uh, membrane. Uh, it is a posterior wall of the what? Posterior what? wall of the urogenital sinus and the sinovaginal. And the sinovaginal. Okay. So what? So uh, what do you manage? Mean? Why do you want to manage? Suppose uh, somebody. Uh, why you want to be very much vigilant in managing these patients? Suppose there is no symptoms also. Somebody comes to you like this with amenorrhea. And you have done one scan, there is a hematocolpus and hematometra. Why do you want to manage immediately? She's not having symptoms. What is the long term complication? Infertility, ma'am. It can lead to endometriosis and that causes infertility. Okay. So, how do you manage these patients, uh, Dr. Aina? Because you told some incision you will give. Dr. Yes, ma'am. If it's a imperforate hymen, ma'am, mm. uh, with with imperforate hymen will generally present you us with a bluish bulge and which will uh, expand on Velsalva maneuver. In that case, we will give a cruciate incision and we will drain the as much as possible and uh, head end of the patient is lifted to allow for continuous drainage, ma'am. This is for imperforate hymen. If at all there is a transverse vaginal septum, depending on the position of the transverse vaginal septum, we will be going on for the treatment, ma'am. It can go, if it's lower or middle part, we can go through a vaginal approach. If it's an upper uh, transverse vaginal septum, you have to go through a two-step procedure in which the hematocolpus is released from the abdominal procedure and the septum is uh, dissected, resected from the vaginal procedure, ma'am. So, depending on the anatomy, we will be going for the for the treatment. Why? Why this transverse uh, vaginal septum will be transverse, and why not vertical or something like that? It could be vertical, and there. Huh? Vertical also can be there, yes. But transverse yes. will obstruct. But what yes. is the embryology behind that? How it develops? What is the embryological reason for the transverse vaginal septum? What is the embryological reason that no, just happened? Dr. Preeti, you want to answer? Yes. There is no reabsorption of the septum. That is why it remains uh, as such. That is the transverse septum. Resorption of septum? What it is? How, how the uh, urogenital uh, system develops? It? How it develops it? Uh, I know. Ma'am, Euro, urogenital system, uh, the mullerian and the urogenital uh, system uh, converge in the uh, middle, ma'am. That time, uh, the absence of uh, uh, very separation very will very cause. Actually, the sinovaginal bulb, fuse, sinovaginal sinovaginal. bulb only forms the lower part of the vagina. Yes, that is the extreme lower part of the vagina. So if it fails to cannulate, you get the transverse vaginal septum. What I suggest, Preeti and Aina, you should be able to tell complete development of the Mullerian system. How, from where it starts and how uh, the whole uh, things fuses and then uh, whenever it comes to embryology, complete embryology you should tell. You should not tell in uh, pieces like, okay? okay. So we are talking about that and if vertical uh, septum is there, where it will be? Why it should be?
इनफर्टिलिटी Yes, okay. uh, so and they will present usually with a dyspareunia. So if yes, we can reset that septum to avoid the dyspareunia and to avoid the and uh, she can be uh, uh, she can get rid of her infertility. Preeti, yeah. you said that you will do USG in this cryptomenorrhea patient. What what uh, for you want to do USG? What all mm -hmm. things will look for on USG? Ah. Uh, Uterus, ma'am. You have to look for the uterus, ah, ah, under ovary, and any hematoma in the uterus, ma'am. Any collection of the blood. Hematoma, hematocorpus. Hmm. Okay. Next, you said about headache, visual disturbance, and vomiting. Why? Why did you ask all this? Any pain is too much, ma'am. CNS tumors have caused the uh, hypogonadotropic hypogonadism that is caused. I mean, Which CNS tumors will cause hypogonadism? My, uh, micro adenoma or macro adenoma is caused. Mm. Uh, mm. Cranial pharyngioma, uh, prolactinomas. They will cause uh, any space occupying lesions. They will cause all hypothalamic uh, hypogonadotropic symptoms. Ma, they'll present as hypogonad. Go back to previous slide. Secretion of breast. Any pro prolactin, any prolactin, uh, prolactin in me also causes the uh, hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. That is why any secretions come from the breast. Okay, let us go further. No complaints of significant weight loss or vigorous exercise. Or, uh, significant weight loss means how much it should be, and uh, why you are asking this? Uh, significant weight loss is about. Uh, uh, in which case? What? In eating any uh, anorexia nervosa or bulimia. How you can uh, label anorexia nervosa? Uh, Someone has got a weight loss of maybe about five percent. Is it okay? What are the criteria? Uh, she's uh, she's asthenic, ma'am. Already she's asthenic, and she have the disord uh, disfiguration of her own body, ma'am. Okay. What else? Weight loss. How weight loss of five percent over six to twelve months, ma'am. There's a particular time. If during that time period, if she loses five percent weight loss, it will be classified, ma'am. It's only five percent. More than. Is there any other criteria? If she is less than twenty-five percent, I mean, she is more than twenty-five percent uh, less for her height and weight. Whatever she is supposed to be for that age, okay. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, more than twenty-two percent of body fat is required for menstruation to happen, according to the free why? hypothesis. Why? Why? Why fat is required? There is ovary, there is estrogen. Why fat is required in between? Ma'am, peripherally, uh, estrogen production happens through the adipose cells, ma'am. So that's required for uh, menstruation to begin. Ma What is there in adipose cells? Leptin, ma'am. Okay, let us go further. And how this vigorous exercise should cause uh, amenorrhea? Why it should cause amenorrhea? Um, vigorous GnRH should be reduced, ma'am. Uh. It would reduce GnRH. That is why it causes amenorrhea, ma'am. Correct. Okay. And okay. any eating disorder such as anorexia, bulimia, anorexia. Facial hair, acne, hoarseness of voice. For what? 
any hyperandrogenism hyperandrogen what are the hyper causes of hyperandrogenism will be, which will result in primary amenorrhea uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia okay. uh, name one investigation to diagnose congenital adrenal hyperplasia 17 hydroxyl uh, hydroxy progesterone levels level. other screening level okay what is the other uh, differential diagnosis for this hyper hyperandrogenism which is very much prevalent nowadays PCOS, ma'am. PCOS. Nowadays, in Dr. Deepa's special they, area. <laughs> even they present with primary amenorrhea nowadays. They have yes. started to present. Okay. Previously, it was a cause for secondary amenorrhea, but still now we are getting Swelling in the inguinal region, she has mentioned. Already we have discussed. It. Gonads can be there. <laughs> what, what is the next one you have written? Negative history? Uh, one minute. Uh, no history of... Uh, we were talking about PCOS. How looking at the patient, you will come to know that she may be a PCOS case. What all features you will see? Uh, acanthosis nigrin should be seen, ma'am. Hirsutism, features of here, features of hirsutism, okay. abnormal hair growth. Hmm. Abnormal means what do you mean? In the uh, androgen dependent area such as in the upper lip chin mm. uh, in the chest upper abdomen lower abdomen mm. upper back and lower back in the thigh region okay what yeah, is what is uh, canthosis nigrin such as skin discoloration should be seen ma'am what is what are the criteria Oligo. for describe okay. for oligo or anovulation Oligo or okay. anovulation would be seen, ma'am. Okay. What other criteria they have? Uh, I mean, hyperandrogenism, yeah. oligomenorrhea, or amenorrhea, then uh, polycystic ovaries in the scan, ma'am. Go back. Uh, go back. Uh, hot flushes. More no history of heart, more disturbances or decreased libido. Hmm. I'm Why? Why? Yes. Huh? Any hypoandrogenism? Hypoandrogenemia, ma'am. It is not hypoandrogenism. Hypo uh, uh, hypo hypoestrogen. Sorry, ma'am. Hypoestrogenism. Hmm. Such as uh, uh, seen hmm. in gonadal age, uh, gonadal age genesis or. Uh, Premature ovarian failure, hmm. colonial dysgenesis, or uh, premature ovarian failure. Oh, no, what is the genetic cause of premature ovarian failure? It could be uh, because of uh, uh, any chromosomal abnormalities, ma'am. Like uh, fragile, fragile X mutation. Turner syndrome. Uh, Turner's or uh, because of radiation or chemotherapy. No, no. I'm what percentage of Turner's in, in what which, percentage? which mutation of uh, which gene mutation will cause premature ovarian failure? Uh, apart fragile X. Apart from fragile X. Galt one mutation in galactosemia. Galt one uh, mutation. Is Galt one mutation? Galactosemia or also. In how many percentage of primary amenorrhea you will find Turner syndrome? Uh, eight. What is the most common cause of primary amenorrhea? Gonadal dysgenesis. How much percentage common. of primary amenorrhea are gonadal dysgenesis? 30 In, to 40. 40% percentage, 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 percentage. Yeah, somewhere around. No, I asked you in a different way. What is the second common cause of primary amenorrhea? Mullerian agenesis. Mullerian agenesis. As per your case. Third common cause? Uh, testicular. The androgen, androgen, androgen insensitivity, insensitivity syndrome. Testicular feminism. Androgen insensitivity syndrome, which is a very important differential diagnosis of. It is a very important differential diagnosis. Mullerian agenesis. Mullerian agenesis. Mullerian agenesis. How do you differentiate clinically Mullerian agenesis from androgen insensitivity syndrome? 
pubic hair would be present with uh, mullerian agenesis ma'am where it would be would, would be absent in uh, androgen insensitivity syndrome ma'am so in this case you have written uh, she is having pubic anat she has a development she has developed next three okay. hours okay shall we go to the examination part next mother attain why you have mentioned about that uh, mother attain menarche at the age of 14 Mom, constitutional any constitutional delay, delay would have would also have deepa okay. ask them to emphasize it is a complete androgen insensitivity they can't just say androgen yes. okay. yeah ma'am it is complete uh, incomplete in no no you have to tell complete androgen complete complete if you are if you want to tell it as a testicular feminization okay no development you delay next slide no delay okay you continue your presentation Okay, continue now. Uh, past history, past medical history, not a known case of diabetes mellitus, systemic hypertension, tuberculosis, thyroid disorder, or meningitis. No history of any long-term medications. Past surgical history, no history of any abdominal or pelvic surgery in the past. Yes. Mm-hmm. And personal history, appetite is normal, bowel and bladder habits is regular, sleep is normal, no history of smoking, drug abuse, or alcohol intake. and uh, she is uh, about 154 cm and weight about 38 kg and she is moderately built and nourished no history of pyelar ictus sinusitis clubbing left sided neuropathy or pedal edema no signs of hyperandrogen that's just hirsutism acne male pattern baldness and temperature was 98 degree fahrenheit and blood pressure was 110 by 80 mm hg and pulse was 80 beats per minute and regular and rhythm and normal volume respiratory rate was 16 cycles per minute and breast examination tana staging 4 no secretions and axillary hair was tana staging 4 and hair distribution was normal and uh, thyroid examination is normal spine and gait is normal and systemic examination cardiovascular systems uh, s1 and s2 is heard no added murmurs ba- uh, respiratory system bilateral normal vesicular breath sound was heard uh, central nervous system no clean, uh, abnormalities detected per abdomen examination was soft no non tender no mass was palpable inguinal region no mass was palpable priti in which cases cvs is important Um, uh, CVS, syndrome. ma'am. Turner's syndrome. 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 Mullerian uh, agenesis. No, what are the uh, abnormalities? Skeletal, abnormalities? Ab- skeletal abnormalities and renal abnormalities. Renal abnormalities. What are the renal and abnormal? Do you look for renal abnormalities in the Turner syndrome also? Yes, ma'am. What are the renal abnormalities? Heart show, heart show kidney would be seen, and collecting that. Will be calcium degradation. What are the autoimmune disorders associated? Have you examined thyroid in her? Yes, ma'am. Thyroid was normal, ma'am. So, what are the autoimmune mm-hmm. disorders associated with the Turner's? Thyroiditis would be seen. Hmm. Ash. Then what else? Uh, Thyroiditis. Aina, can you add? Ma'am. Because she uh, don't no history of diabetes mellitus. diabetes also type 1 diabetes type 1 diabetes type 1 diabetes is seen hepatitis can be there thrombocytopenia autoimmune he- uh, hearing loss could also be there sensory neural hearing loss and turner syndrome patients they can also present gonadal dysgenesis with uh, sensory neural hearing loss what do you call it as what is that syndrome perot syndrome uh, perot not turner syndrome perot syndrome 
Will go further. Yes, ma'am. Okay. On, okay. On external, oh, external genetic. External genital examination, pubic hair tanner stage four. And what are the standard staging? Um, breast and pubic hair. For pubic hair, there are uh, uh, tanner stage one is uh, prepubertal. Then we have long uh, hair on uh, confined to the labia majora. Third is uh, curly hair confined to the mons pubis. Fourth is curly hair uh, covering the whole of genitalia, excluding the medial part of thigh. Fifth is including the medial part of thigh, ma'am. Good. And labia major is normal, labia minora is normal, and external urethral meatus is normal, and no cl clitoromegaly. And uh, per speculum exam, per speculum is not done as patient was having pain, ma'am. And per vaginal examination, admits one finger, vaginal dimple of two centimeter was felt. Per rectal examination, uterus and cervix was not felt, rectal mucosa was free. And uh, summary, 21 years old, Mrs. M, married since two months, belonging to socioeconomic class three, has um, not attained menarche, came with complaints of difficulty in coitus with well-developed secondary sexual characters, with blind vagina on exa local examination, ad admitted for further evaluation and management. With, diagnosis, oh, uh, with the diagnosis of primary amenorrhea. Okay. So what How would be the differential diagnosis for your patient? Uh, she can have uh, Mullerian agenesis or testicular feminizing syndrome. Uh, 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 the androgen insensitivity, so complete androgen insensitivity syndrome. Or, um, so Mullerian agenesis means it may be... Or, May Rakitansky-Kuzenhauser syndrome, right? Yes, ma'am. So that will be your first to diagnosis. You will not tell it as a complete antigen insensitivity syndrome because you have examined her pubic and she is having a pubic hair. Pubic hair. But still, if you want to rule out, you can rule out. By how will you rule out? By doing um, karyotyping. Karyotyping, ma'am. Karyotyping. By doing uh, karyotyping. Okay. Karyotyping. Suppose this, what is the next investigation you will do in this patient? Because now, now uh, you just summarize what we learned till now. Okay. From history, we asked so many questions. So what are those questions? And uh, how not. do you think, uh, It is mainly related to cause of primary cause amenorrhea, of primary amenorrhea. Okay, from history. Yes. So you just summarize what are the causes. And then we will move further. Right, Zipa? Is it okay? Yes, ma'am. Uh, she has not attained mm -hmm. menarche yet, ma'am. She's 21 years and she's not attained menarche yet. And uh, she has a normal... Uh, Don't uh, summarize. You just tell that what are the different causes from your negative history and all. What are the different causes you try to rule out? How do you, how do you classify the causes of primary amenorrhea? Compartmental like classification. Hypo. Hypogonadotropic according to WHO classification, it can be classified into three classes, hypogonadotropic hypogonadism, eugonadotropic hypogonadism, and hypergonadotropic hypogonadism. So in this be very case, clear. see Dr. Aina, to be very clear, you can classify based on level also, otherwise compartment yes, level. Compartment. Only classified compart based on compartment. Compartment one or level one is? The uh, hypothalamic causes. Yes. No, anatomical, Anatom uh, anatomical, anatomical, causes, anatomical cause, compartment or ovarian, or ovarian uh, dysfunction, or a pituitary cause and hypothalamic cause. So you enumerate the causes of one, two, three, four, like that. Tell for yes. one. Uh, for uh, for anatomical cause, it can be an imperforated hymen, uh, or transverse vaginal septum, Mullerian agenesis, or uh, uh, androgen insensitivity syndrome. Hmm. In this case, there is one more thing. thing called absent, absent endometrium. And uh, cervical endometrium. endometrium. Which are very less, but still 0.1 percentage case reports are there. Okay. So, then, no evidence of estrogen, endogenous estrogen at all. Okay. So, so, these patients will present with eugonadotropic uh, 
the gonadotropins will be normal. This is because of the anatomical causes. Uh -huh. Then if there's a compartment two defect, which affects the ovary, there'll be hypergonadotropic uh, hypogonadism in those cases. So the, mostly it will be related to the ovarian causes, uh -huh. like uh, Turner syndrome, chromosomal Turner. abnormality like Turner syndrome, or, or uh, gonadal dysgenesis. Gona pure gonadal dysgenesis, Swire syndrome, Savage syndrome, depending on the chromosome. If it is 46XY, it will be uh, classified as Swire syndrome. If it is 46XX, it will be the pure gonadal dysgenesis, or it could be the gonadotropin resistant syndrome. So that will come under hypergonadotropic what hypogonadal is Savage syndrome, Dr. Aina. You mentioned about is Savage that? syndrome. Um, gonadotropin resistant, the receptor is answer, then you will you will take the next compartment. Okay. The receptors are uh, resistant to gonadotropin action, ma'am. The gonadotropin release is uh, normal, but the receptors are uh, resistant to the action. Hence, there will be hypergonadotropic hypogonadism. That's why it is called as resistant ovary syndrome. Resistant ovary syndrome, ma'am. So what will be the karyotype of this Savage syndrome? 46XX, ma'am. XX only, okay. Yeah, Dr. Preeti, go ahead with level three and level four. Uh, pituitary, any pituitary tumor causes, uh, any pituitary tumors would also cause, uh, that would cause with hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism. Mm -hmm. And uh, both pituitary and hypothalamus would uh, have hypothal hy hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism. Okay. Kalman syndrome comes under what? Kalman hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. Hypogonadotropic. So you should have told the causes. Already you have we have discussed the causes also. I think they have enumerated the causes, ma'am. Yes. Let us move forward. Let us go with the workup. Suppose a lady comes to you with the uh, with amenorrhea, uh, uh, primary amenorrhea. So how do you work up? First, what do you look for next? FSH First, you have levels. to look for the secondary sexual characters. All yeah. those things we have already told you now. FSH it's levels, ma'am. Depending but, on the FSH levels, but you, you have looked for secondary sexual characters. Okay. Secondary sexual characters are present as per your case. What will you do next? Do a. Uh, ma'am, uh, ultrasound yeah. should be. Okay. Ultrasound should Clinical be examination and ultrasound. Ultrasound, ultrasound, ultrasound if uterus is absent or rudimentary, the diagnosis the next step would be MRKHS. Yes, or complete or a, uh, complete. Do a karyotyping and to differentiate between both. Or we could do a serum testosterone level, ma'am, to differentiate because in a complete androgen sensitivity syndrome, there will be male be level of testosterone, ma'am. Whereas in uh, MRKH, it will be female. Okay. Suppose uh, secondary sexual, will you look for height or not in these patients, even with normal secondary sexual characters? Yes, ma'am. So the height will be normal only in no. these patients. Yes, ma'am. Both the so patients. Suppose there is absent secondary sexual. This patient has self. You should, will they present at 21 years with absent sexual characters? Usually no, they will not they present. present. They will present earlier. Present earlier. This, this lady presented later because she is having all the secondary okay. sexual characters. Her problem was only with the vagina and the uterus. That is why she has come to us after the marriage. Okay, suppose the secondary sexual characters are absent. What will you do next? Um, In your evaluation. We do. You look for height. 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 No. Suppose Normal. the height is uh, short stature. Hmm. What is that? Then, what do you do next? Gonadotropin level. Gonadot Hypogonadotropin or hypergonadotropin? FSH and LH. Okay. If it's hypergonadotropic, then our differential will become Turner's automatically. If it's hypogonadotropic, then it will depend on congenital or required cause. If it's a congenital cause, it will be the hyper. Uh, you should remember that short feature is not only associated with Turner's. It can be even with the compartment. With the hypothalamus. Yeah, okay. even with, with the, the hypothalamus. Growth hormone will also be decreased. Isn't yes, it? Decreased. In those patients, that is why. Okay, suppose it is a normal stature, absent secondary sexual characters. Say uh, hyper or hypogonadotropic. Hypo. Hypo. Hyper so, suppose if it, is, if it is hyper, what is Con the diagnosis? It would be gonadal. Gonadal. Swire syndrome. Pure gonadal right. dysgenesis. Pure gonadal dysgenesis is either then you or, should look for karyotyping. Yes, Why you should look for karyotyping? Depending, ma'am, if it is for if the karyotype has XY, in that case, we will look for gonads because they have a tendency to turn malignant. So gonadectomy becomes very important in such a case. 
that's why it's very important in which condition <laughs> even though there is a y chromosome you don't immediately do a gonadectomy complete right. androgen insensitive insensitivity syndrome ma'am because why you don't do develop a gonadectomy for development of secondary sexual characters we leave the testes ma'am after uh, 17 or 16 years of age we remove the because, and also the after uh, doing gonadectomy uh, what you should supplement in these patients estrogen should be given ma'am estrogen should be given no no need for progesterone because there is no uterus in such patients ma'am okay. only if there is <laughs> so that uh, why okay, you are not mentioning test. mosaic turner ma normal height yeah mosaic turner even yes. in normal height the differential diagnosis number one you told is pure gonadal dysgenesis number two is mosaic turner still we get cases of mosaic turner yes, and many uh, uh, turner's abnormalities even without uh, with a normal stature and uh, without uh, many features of turners also you get cases okay so you are you are patient what is the plan now you are patient minute, what, you, what you are planning to one do minute, one minute if uh, karyotyping is normal and fsh levels are high what you will do ma'am we will suspect either pure gonadal dysgenesis or uh, savage syndrome 17 hydroxylase deficiency how you can test it investigation what investigation ma'am 17 hydroxy progesterone levels will be high in uh, case of uh, 17 hydroxylase deficiency ma'am and they will mostly present with ambiguous genitalia and it will be identified very early on they will not we will not wait up till 13 or 14 yes. years of age for the identification of Maybe a patient second case should be late on set cases at 13 years 14 years also with the congenital because two months back only we diagnosed a case of is with congenital adrenal hyperplasia yeah. Late onset congenital adrenal. Yeah, you get late onset congenital adrenal hyperplasia, right? Okay, so what, ma'am? We'll go ahead with this case. What you are going yes. to do with this patient, uh, Dr. Preeti? What you are going to do with this patient? Uh, uh, first, you have to do an ultrasound for this patient to look for any uterus is present or not, ma'am. Yes, And you have to do a. Uh, do a karyotyping for this patient, ma'am, to distinguish between Mullerian and uh, complete testic androgen yeah. sensitive disorder. Yeah, we have done karyotyping. And after this, what is it? Yes, yes. Uh, after that, uh, we have to uh, do a, uh, a new vaginoplasty should be done, ma'am, for this patient. Before doing uh, vaginoplasty, you have to rule out other anomalies which are associated. So you will do so you will see abdomen also to rule out renal anomaly. You will do a complete screening of X-ray spine. What are the skeletal uh, abnormalities you expect in these patients? Because you have mentioned coliosis normal in your examination. Col yes, ma'am. Okay. Coliosis, hemi vertebra. Mm. Lumberization of the sacral vertebra, sacral mm. agenesis. Sacral agenesis is quite rare. Okay, whether there is a possibility of rudimentary uterus, you told that you yes, want to look for uh, uterus. Uh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. There are two types of Mullerian agenesis, ma'am. Type A and type B of Mullerian agenesis, ma'am. Uh, type A would have symmetrical muscular rudimentary uteri with normal fallopian tube, whereas type B would have uh, uh, with the uh, uh, rudimentary fallopian tube would be seen, ma'am. With rudimentary uteri, rudimentary fallopian tube would be seen, ma'am. Okay. So ten percentage will present with the cyclical pain because yes. I am coming back there because you told there is cyclical pain and all ten percentage of the patient with MRKHS can present with the cyclical pain if they have a rudimentary uterus. Rudimentary uterus is very small. Even it can take three, two or three years has been reported for them to manifest with the hematometra. Okay. So you have diagnosed. So the treatment is the primary goal of your treatment will be to create a functional vagina. Very functional vagina. So what is the what are the procedures? available procedures to do which should gives optimal results and when do you want to do the prayna yes ma'am there are two types there there can be we can do uh, non surgical procedures or surgical procedures ma'am so non surgical procedures will have the frank dilators and uh, uh, in uh, in green uh, dilators in which they are glass rubber dilators that they using progressive dilators generally these things are done or if you're going for surgical procedures generally is done when they are about to attain sexual activity so that they can maintain the uh, patency of the newly created vagina ma'am so around that time around uh, around the That's time right. you plan for dilatation you cannot do in a married lady it's not that much uh, it will not give them uh, 
it will give the results but I they will be ready to take it actually but before marriage if they are presenting around 14 years 15 years you can start them and then you can uh, ask them to have periodically cycles periodically. are available uh, cycles are available where they can go ahead with the dilatation other things yes, if you want to do surgery uh, very good it has to be either just before the marriage or before marriage. the starting of sexual function or just after or the marriage just. if the, uh, the other side of the couple is ready to offer the surgery okay in this so, case, what you will offer? Uh, surgical procedures. Surgical procedure. Procedure, ma'am. As she's married and she can have intercourse. Okay, what is the surgery which will give very good results, uh, Dr. Aina? Which ET technique, ma'am? Because it, uh, modified which? Laparoscopically, when it's done, Lap 7 to 10 days, a uh, new vagina can be created. 7 to 10 so, centimeter of uh, vagina can also be created. Okay. So, what is the scope of Mekindo procedure? Uh, it is a new uh, vagina has been created between uh, by uh, creating a space between recto vaginal space and placing the graft inside them. Skin the graft the and the rectum. Okay. And the uh, skin graft is uh, split screen graft is. Over a mold, it's put, ma'am. Split skin graft is put over a mold and it's inserted into the vagina to vagina. create a new vagina. Create a new vagina. Okay. And it's removed after one week. And subsequently, it is uh, the patient is either patient asked to follow up to. and uh, subsequently it's removed and it's uh, followed up now. How okay. much time is available for us? Ma'am, we have 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes, ma'am. Okay. 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 So we'll, uh, we'll finish this and we can finish off the remaining part of ovarian also. Okay. So what is the scope of fertility in these patients? Suppose she's married. She's telling that I want a... Husband is also, he is also okay. You have given her the vagina, her sexual function, you have, you have yeah, replenished her sexual function, she is okay. Then you want to give her reproductive function. What is the scope? Surrogacy. <laughs> by surrogacy, her, by her own oversight. With the so you have to tell it as in vitro fertilization and surrogacy. So for surrogacy. Not only surrogacy. In vitro fertilization with her own gametes own and own. surrogacy. So the recent thing is uterine transplantation, which is yes. on delay. Because the first uterine transplantation in India is done for a MRK patient. Yes, ma'am. Year 2014. Okay. So a patient is uh, diagnosed with turners or mosaic turners. How do you evaluate? She is now having a 46 uh, X, X with X0 with mosaic or X, XX with uh, this one. How do you evaluate? What are the evaluation things you'll do? Um, to rule out other complications associated. Because you don't know she, she can have an renal so yeah. you have to evaluate all those things. By 12 to 15 years of age, she has to go undergo, undergo ECG examination ECG. and it is be... Or echo. Echo. Echo is done every yeah. three to five years, ma'am. Echo is repeated every three to five every years for such years. patients. Mm. Then? Uh, uh, um, then renal ultrasound, renal done, al ultrasound for, uh, has to be done. done. And thyroid level should be checked, ma'am. Thyroid RFT, level. LFT, and RFT, thyroid, LFT, serum, CBT. electrolytes, everything has to be checked on a two-yearly or a three-yearly basis, ma'am. Okay. And fasting so that, blood sugar levels are also being checked. Yeah, because we were discussing about the autoimmune. Thyroid function test, you have to do, you have to do liver function test, you have to do complete blood yes. count because I told all the other things which are associated. Okay. So you have diagnosis. How can you prevent this short stage? Sir? Mom, By giving growth, growth hormone. hormone. Earlier diagnosis, Earlier and, later diagnosis and giving growth hormone. Not when she comes to us with the, usually if it is diagnosed by the pediatrician, you can uh, help her out with this one. Okay, so how do you manage these patients, bonded dysgenesis patients? They have come to you with, uh, uh, with amenorrhea. A patient has come to you with amenorrhea, you have diagnosed it as a bundle dysgenesis. May it be a mosaic or it may be a pure bundle dysgenesis. What do you do? How do you manage You give, them? You give a growth hormone, ma'am. Before uh, uh, she's coming to you with dose estrogen, you have to start on uh, estrogen, should be started, ma'am. Low dose estrogen uh, is started for the first uh, few years, and then it is uh, start. Then estrogen, estrogen and progesterone, progesterone combination is started so that uh, when you add progesterone, in which case, so you'll add progesterone. When will you add progesterone when she's having a withdrawal bleeding? 
it is not withdrawal bleeding uh, 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 menstrual cycle endometrial menstrual. thickness should be attained ma'am enough it is to a breakthrough bleeding when you keep uh, on giving estrogen at one point of time that endometrial breaks break. a progesterone and it will tell you by bleeding so that time you will give her progesterone, progesterone. otherwise you can if you want to know the years you can give after 12 to 20 12 uh, to 24 24 months of progesterone, progesterone. okay whether there is any possibility of pregnancy in this wonder dysgenesis is patients yes ma'am donor ovum donor ovum with donor ovum ivf uh, we can suppose if it is a donor uh, it is contraindicated right if she is okay, having a little contraindication for pregnancy ma'am donor is relative contraindication for pregnancy it is a relative because the cardiac conditions uh, become bad during pregnancy they get worsened during pregnancy so there is a rupture of aorta there is a chance yes, for rupture of aortic aneurysm if it is a coaptation of aorta also there is a more chance for other problems okay and you said that uh, there is estrogen should be given if it is a short stature patient you should you should uh, delay it because by epiphysis mam epiphysis what they delay the epiphysis so here will take this so when do you start estrogen appropriate age when you should start estrogen before not less than 12 years and before 15 years of age after 12 years to you have to look for epiphyseal closure epiphyseal closure bone age we have to check mam and after that we have to start estrogen Anything else, uh, Deepa? You want to ask anything else? Yeah, ma'am. I think I will have covered. You have covered everything, no? Very good, uh, Doctor Preeti. Very good case you have presented. Because sometimes we come across a case like this. They present like this, so we can give them a new agenda. What is very important in these patients is in the management, which I expected is you have to counsel them. Counseling part is uh, very important in these patients. Uh, counsel the husband partner also because there should not be the problem that they have not uh, told all those things so you can counsel them once a marriage has happened you can counsel them and even uh, any other patients with the gonadal dysgenesis so you have to counsel them whether they can go ahead with the marriage or not and what is their future yes, reproductive sexual option everything has to be counseled before uh, you treat them rather than uh, apart from the medical type of management which you are giving counseling plays a very important role so thank you dr preeti and dr aina thank Aina-Pia. you we will be we are able to well, thank you thank you for the organizers for giving us uh, good time mm-hmm. here we were able to discuss all aspects of primary amenorrhea thank you thank dr pushpa ma'am and dr deepa ma'am it was a very thorough and excellent session thanks dr aina and preeti it was a very wonderful you, presentation you people answered well all the best for your exams Thank now you. without wasting much time let's move on to the last one, session for today one minute yes, there ma'am. are some uh, recent articles review articles maybe 2020 21 you just go through that okay nicely uh, they in sh- 